good morning all in today's class the topic for discussion is anti anxiety drugs that means the drugs which are useful in the management of anxiety as well as anxiety associated symptoms anxiety means it's an unpleasant state which includes tension apprehension or uneasiness most of the time it uh, seems to be arises from an unknown source it's not only associated with this psychological symptoms only it could be associated with certain somatic or physical symptoms also which includes uh, this tachycardia sweating tremor palpitation hyper hyperapnea etc so if you want to treat a patient with anxiety you know you should also able to manage all these somatic or physical symptoms too sympathetic overactivity is the basic reason behind the uh behind the associated somatic or physical symptoms associated with this anxiety it manifests as dilated pupils tachycardia tremor sweating etc so uh, uh, so for a successful management of this uh, anxiety requires this adequate control of this sympathetic activity hyperactivity also the term anxiety comprises all the following conditions which includes panic disorders generalized anxiety disorders phobias stress disorders as well as obsessive compulsive disorders now comes to anti anxiety drugs so the major mechanism by which these agents produces anti anxiety effect is depression of the central nervous system activities so most are cns depressants they controls the anxiety symptoms and produces a restful state for the mind without interfering with the normal mental or physical functions and uh, in the following slides we will learn about few drugs uh, we will not going uh, each and every details of this drug because these drugs might have already been discussed in certain other chapters for example we will be discussing about benzodiazepines that that have been already discussed under sedative hypnotics so we will be dealing only few important points which are relevant in this anxiety related chapter now let's see the groups of drugs effective for the management of anxiety which includes this uh, first one is the benzodiazepines for example diazepam lorazepam alprazolam oxazepam chlorazepoxide etc and the second one is azapiron which includes buspiron gepiron ipsapiron then beta blockers like propranolol sedative hypno uh, sedative antihistaminics like uh, hydroxyzin then other groups like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors tricyclic antidepressants monoamine oxidase inhibitors serotonin noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors mepropionate or clonidine so even though uh, we might have this much drugs but the most commonly in clinical purpose they use benzodiazepine azapirones beta blockers or ssris now we shall see the most important group of drugs in the management of anxiety which is benzodiazepines they act by inhibiting the postsynaptic membrane through the benzodiazepine receptor the most common most important sites in which they act includes midbrain limbic system or ascending reticular formation how the postsynaptic membrane is inhibited by this benzodiazepine the inhibition is brought about by its agonistic action on the gaba a receptor as you know gaba is the inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain so benzodiazepine they produces its inhibitory action on the postsynaptic membrane by by having an agonistic action in the gaba a receptor this is the schematic representation of a gaba a receptor which is having uh, several subunits which includes 2 alpha 1 2 beta 2 and 1 gamma gamma 2 so there is a benzodiazepine binding site between this alpha 1 and gamma 2 and there is a central chloride conducting pore and there are certain gaba binding sites so this is the schematic representation for this uh, um, gaba a receptor so we we shall see the mechanism of action of benzodiazepine in the coming slides 
in usual cases uh, when the gaba binds to this gaba binding site on the gaba air receptor there is increased conductivity or increased permeability of the chloride ions through this central pores so increased chloride entry through this central pore leads to hyperpolarization of the postsynaptic membrane so this hyperpolarized postsynaptic membrane failed to transmit action potential so as a result of that there is postsynaptic inhibition and this response is exaggerated when the benzodiazepine uh, takes the action so the benzodiazepines binds to the benzodiazepine binding site on the gaba a receptor so there will be increased chloride conductance across the membrane so that means uh, increased chloride entry uh, basically this uh, benzodiazepines are gaba agonist that means it it's a gaba its basic role is gaba facilitatory it it increases the frequency of chloride channel opening so increased amount of chloride is entered postsynaptic membrane is hyperpolarized there is inhibition of the action potential conduction this picture further explains the mechanism of action of benzodiazepines though the first part that part a where indicates when the receptor is empty that means there is no agonist so the empty receptor is inactive and the coupled chloride channel is closed and part b means when receptor binds with gaba so binding of gaba causes the chloride ion channel to open leading to hyperpolarization of the cell and part c means when the benzodiazepine binds to the gaba receptor binding of gaba is enhanced by the benzodiazepine resulting in a greater entry of chloride ion so this entry of chloride hyperpolarizes the cell makes it more difficult to depolarize and therefore reduces the neuronal excitability few important pharmacokinetic features of these benzodiazepines we can administer these drugs through oral intravenous intramuscular as well as rectal routes and it has a very good oral absorption it undergoes both first as well as second phases in the metabolism and it undergoes renal clearance it these benzodiazepines has the ability to cross the placenta as well as secreted in the breast milk so the use of this benzodiazepine should be cautious in pregnancy as well as in lactating mothers following are certain adverse drug reactions shown by these uh, benzodiazepines which includes sedation confusion lightheadedness cognitive impairment vertigo and alteration in the appetite as well as in the weight gain altered sexual functions as well as dependence but we can't expect all these side effects when the when we use this agent as an anti anxiety anti anxiety drugs because uh, the drugs uh, the dose at which we used for this drugs for this anti anxiety purpose is very low so we may expect certain sedation lightheadedness or cognitive impairment in such conditions we can't expect all the side effects to happen in case of anti anxiety purpose now what are the advantages of these agents over other cns depressants these agents have high therapeutic index do not affect respiration or cardiovascular functions no action shown any other body systems no microsomal induction so there is less chances of drug interaction no abuse liability or dependence and even if uh, if you administer these drugs in a high amount in a patients we can reverse all the side effects by using a specific antagonist known as flumazenil now let's see a few important benzodiazepines so the first one is chlordisipoxide it was the first benzodiazepine used as an anti anxiety drugs it produces a smooth but long lasting effect uh, so this agent is preferred in chronic anxiety states does not produce much benefit in acute situations uh, it has a t half of 6 to 12 hours and uh, and most commonly used in a dose of 25 to 100 mg the next agent is oxazepam it has a very important feature that this is the benzodiazepine with least hepatic metabolism so this agent can be safely used in those with hepatic impairment it has a very short duration of action and usually used in short lasting anxiety state then it's uh, lorazepam we can administer this agent both orally as well as intramuscularly uh, this benzodiazepine has very less injection site complication 
that means uh, can safely administer through the intramuscular route it's a short acting agent and uh, it's also uh, uh, safe in elderly too we can use this drugs uh, this benzodiazepine in short lasting anxiety conditions like panic episodes uh, tension syndrome obsessive compulsive disorder etc and uh, most common dose is 1 to 6 mg per day and this agent does not produce any active metabolite so it does not have a prolonged duration of action Uh, then it's about alprazolam. It's a benzodiazepine with both anxiolytic as well as antidepressant properties. It's a high potent anxi anxiolytic agent. We can use this drug for anxiety associated with depression. And this agent has very less drowsiness and it do produces a active metabolite. And uh, the most common dose at which it is it's used is 0.25 to 0.5 milligram twice or thrice daily. The second group of anti-anxiety drug is Azapirones. In this we have Buspirone, Jepirone and Ipsapirone. The major mechanism of action of this drug is selective agonistic action on 5-hydroxytryptamine 1 dye receptor. And in addition to that it has a, a weak D2 receptor blocking action also. But this dopamine D2 receptor blocking does not give them the additional properties of antipsychotic action or they do not produce extra any extra pyramidal side effects and the major site of action is dorsal rafe serotoninergic neurons what are the advantages as well as disadvantages of using these azapirones as anti-anxiety drugs so the first one is advantages they do not produce any sedation no tolerance or physical dependence no abuse liability less impairment on psychomotor functions do not potentiate the actions of other CNS drugs and disadvantages includes slow onset so it's not suitable for acute situations and require usually requires thrice daily administra administration so the patient compliance could be very low the most common route of administration is oral and it's rapidly absorbed through the oral route it has an extensive first pass metabolism so it has very less bioavailability and it's excreted through urine as well as through the feces and these are the few adverse effects seen along with its use like dizziness headache nausea tachycardia pupillary reconstruction etc and the usual dose at which it's used is 5 to 10 milligram thrice daily now a few points about beta blockers for example it's propranolol they reduces the symptoms of sympathetic overactivity uh, that includes palpitation tremor rise in bp etc but they do not produce any effect on the psychological symptoms like worry tension or anxiety usually uh, these beta blockers are uh, prescribed in performance or situational anxiety so when uh, when a performer or a person feels anxiety he or she can take this drug at least one or two hours prior to the performance so they can simply or calmly perform their functions now a few points about the use of this SSRIs in anxiety we have uh, different agents uh, like citalopram, escitalopram, fluoxetine, fluoxamine etc in SSRI group uh, their most common indication is depression but this agent can be preferably used in chronic anxiety states also it started in a low dose and can be gradually titrated according to the need it has a slow onset of action so not preferred for acute cases it's usually used for chronic situations and usually started with a benzodiazepine because in the initial times uh, the effects carried out by the benzodiazepine so when this selective serotonin inhi uh, reuptake inhibitors takes action we can gradually taper the dose of this benzodiazepine Coming to the management of different types of anxiety. The first one is generalized anxiety disorders. It means a persistent or excessive unrealistic worry associated with somatic symptoms. So for the management of this generalized anxiety disorders, we can uh, classify the patients in acute phase or in long time or chronic phase. So for the acute phase management, benzodiazepines are preferred because of their rapid onset of action. Uh, the examples are lorazepam or oxazepam 
but uh, it's not ideal for long term treatment due to the chance due to the ch uh, risk of development of tolerance as well as abuse liability and for long term cases we can use selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or bisperols the second condition is obsessive compulsive disorder in this the patient suffers obsessive thoughts as well as compulsive behaviors which may leads to impairment of the everyday functioning initially uh, the doctors tried the treatment of uh, this obsessive compulsive disorders with tricyclic antidepressants but the patient compliance is very low they have the patient experiences several side effects so it's later replaced by selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors buspirons or benzodiazepines then panic disorders there is recurrent and unpredictable panic at uh, panic attacks with intense discomfort and fear of impending doom or death the treatment usually started with low doses of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and the dose can be gradually tightened tightened up phobias or phobic disorders there is persistent fear of objects or situations exposure to such objects or situations which results in immediate anxiety reaction so the patient avoids the phobic stimulus and this avoidance usually impairs the occupational as well as social functioning so the treatment options we have beta blockers as well as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors propranolol 20 to 40 mg uh, orally to one or two hour prior to the event it's a good option for the management of this phobic disorders stress disorders experiencing extreme traumatic events may leads to the development of anxiety that could be acute response or may manifest as post traumatic stress disorders in both uh, situations the individual experiences associated symptoms of detachment and loss of emotional responsibility and uh, we can manage the conditions by using benzodiazepines selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors uh, a monoamine oxidase inhibitors along with this supportive psychotherapy and that's all about this anti anxiety drugs uh, we have certain important drugs like benzodiazepines beta blockers asapirones selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors as anti anxiety drugs we have discussed only few points of these drugs in relation to the anti anxiety effect uh, other important points of these drugs will be discussed in other parts like sedative hypnotics antidepressants or antipsychotics etc and thank you